The problem reads, a hot air balloon has a volume of 3,100 meters cubed and a total weight of 350 kilograms, including the gondola, the heater, and the crew. It is an autumn morning with T equal to 12 degrees centigrade and P equal to 100 kilopascals, with no wind and negligible change in temperature with height. The crew is heating the air in the balloon. At what temperature will the balloon lift off the ground? What is the maximum height the balloon will rise if the balloon crew heats the air to 50 degrees Celsius? So first let's kind of understand the problem. We have a balloon and it has a volume of 3,100 meters cubed and its weight is 350. And it's 12 degrees Celsius outside and there's one at atmosphere of pressure. There we go, sitting on the ground there. So 350. One atmosphere, 12 degrees outside, and at this particular moment, 12 degrees inside the balloon. So the air inside weighs the same as the equal volume of external air. Pretend that it's like a hard balloon that can't collapse on us. So it's just sitting there with air inside it from the outside. Now, we start to heat the air in the balloon. At what temperature will the balloon lift off the ground? Well, we gotta get rid of 350 kilograms of weight in here so that we can pick off that weight there. So we want to know at what temperature, the air in the balloon is getting warmer, at what temperature we have lift off. We need that air inside to weigh 350 kilograms less than the equal volume of external air and then we're balanced, we're sitting right there on the ground. And then we're gonna heat it more and more and more and when it gets to be 50 degrees inside the balloon, we want to know this height is it. So that is our goal. We want to find the, the degrees Celsius inside the balloon where we have liftoff and if we have 50 degrees inside the balloon to what height can we rise to at maximum. So the first part of this problem that we're going to solve is at what temperature will the balloon lift off. As always we start by writing down what we have. We have in all states a volume of 3,100 meters cubed. We have in all states an outside pressure of one atmosphere 10 to the 5 pascals. At, at all states we have a temperature outside of 12 degrees centigrade. So these are the three things that we are given plus the weight of the balloon. We have a static vertical system. Each of these are stages. Our only force is gravity. Our fluid is air, which is compressible. So we have to think about density. And we're going to assume that our air acts as an ideal gas. First thing is let's assign our answer a variable. So, so let TL be the temperature in degrees Celsius of air in the balloon for liftoff. Now, liftoff can be treated as a buoyancy problem. It can also be treated as a z equal to zero problem. And we should get the same answer in both cases. But first, let's look at the easy way, which is a buoyancy problem. So what is the force of buoyancy? Buoyancy is the weight of what's being displaced. So the force of buoyancy here is the, the weight of this kind of air out here being displaced by the balloon. So it's the weight of the air displaced by the balloon, but this air outside. Let's label that W air. What is the force of liftoff? Well, it's all of the weight of this system. So the force of liftoff is the weight of the heated air in the balloon plus the weight of everything else plus the weight of the balloon. And we will label that W hot air plus W balloon. So in order to get liftoff, the force of the buoyancy must equal the force of the liftoff. So W hot air plus W balloon must equal W air. So this is our equation, which we will solve for TL. So what is W air? Well, the weight of air is the density of air times gravity times the volume. What is the weight of hot air? Well, it's exactly the same except that we put rho hot air here 
and we'll have to find both of these rows. And what is the weight of the balloon? Well, that's what's given to us. 350 kilograms times G. So, we have the weight of air is equal to the weight of hot air plus the weight of the balloon. The G's will all cancel. And we get rho air times volume equals rho hot air times the volume plus 350, which is what we said when we had our balloons out. If we can make this hot air weigh 350 kilograms less than the cold air, we will achieve liftoff. So what are the equations we need? You need these equations, the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT. We need that rho is equal to mass over volume and mass is equal to N times molar mass. And we do that because we can find in the table the molar mass of air is 29 kilograms versus kilomoles. And when we put all of these together, as in the previous video, we will get rho equal to P times M over RT. And since we're going to be doing this for two different temperatures, let's take that T out. And so this is the formula that we're going to be wanting to use. We will put a box around it. Okay, so then rho air is equal to P M over R times one over, and this is T air. T air is 12 Celsius, so 12 plus 273. How much is a rho hot air? Well, it's the same thing, P, M over R. But now we have 1 over, and instead of 12, we, we are looking for TL. So TL plus 273. So when we put these two together into our equation here, we get P, M over R times V, and here P, M over R times V, M, V over R, and then we get this 1 over, what is this, 285. Now this is sub, coming on this side, minus 1 over TL plus 273, and then that's equal to 350. You can solve it any way you want. In the end, you should get TL equals 41 degrees Celsius. And that is the answer to part one of this problem. At what temperature will the balloon lift off the ground? When we heat the inside to 41 degrees Celsius, the balloon will become buoyant. So now we're ready to solve the second part of the problem. What is the maximum height the balloon will rise if the balloon crew heats the air to 50 degrees Celsius? So we're looking for this height here. And the minute we start working with heights, that means that we have to start working with differential equations. So what do we have? We're working with a static vertical system. Each of these is a state that is static. Our only force is gravity. Our fluid is air, which is compressible. So rho will depend on Z. And we're assuming that our air is acting as an ideal gas. Also, we should mention that we're considering that the volume of the system to be just the volume of the balloon. That is, we're ignoring the volume of the gondola and the heater and the crew, etc. And an important key feature is that T does not depend on Z. Everywhere we have T equal 12 degrees. So, as in our previous problems would said, we have Static vertical system only forces gravity. P is a function only of Z. This is a true differential. DP dZ is minus rho G, but rho depends on Z. And you can go back to the previous problem and you will find where we worked out that rho is equal to PM over RT. We did that in the first part of this problem too. 
And because T does not change with Z, we can take T outside of the differential and after inverting, just find that dP dZ is RT over M d rho dZ. After substituting this into this part here and then moving dZ on the other side, we got our integral, which we found to have this solution here, which is what we're going to work on. You can memorize this directly. I just wanted to make sure that you understand that t being independent of z is what gives us this integral and this result. Now we're going to solve this problem as if we started with this and we ended with this. We're going to ignore and not use any of the results from the previous part. So this is going to be our system one and this is going to be our system two. But after that, we will actually show that we could have used this as our system one to get our answer here, or also, alternatively, we could have used this as our system one and this is our system two and gotten this result. So this equation is good for working both parts of the problem, and we'll see that at the very end. An important thing is that row one and row two are densities of their entire systems. So if I calculate row one, I need to know what I'm looking at here as my system, row two what I'm looking here as my system. We know that rho, by definition, is the mass over the volume, but we have to look at the entire system. That was why I mentioned that we're considering the volume of the system to be 3,100 meters cubed. So what is this system? This system here only looks at the weight of the displaced air. It does not take into consideration the weight of the balloon itself. Whereas once we've achieved liftoff, we have to take the weight of the air in the balloon plus the weight of the balloon. So and once you get off the ground, you have to consider the weight of the balloon in your system. Now, looking at this formula, remember that we had this formula here. However, this only calculates the density of the air. Okay? It doesn't take into account the weight of the balloon. That's okay here, but here we have to make sure that we add in the density of the balloon into the system. So what do we have for row one? Row one is simply the row of air at 12 degrees Celsius. So row of 12 degrees Celsius, we'll write that. And substituting, that means we have P times M over R times 1 over, and don't forget to put this in Kelvin, so 12 plus 273. And when you calculate this out on a calculator, you will get 1.22. So we've used P here, M is the molar mass of air, R is the gas constant, 12 degrees Celsius plus 273 gives us Kelvin, and that gives us that row one is 122. So row of this system is 122 kilograms per meters cubed. Now, how much is row two? Row two is equal to the mass of the air at 50 degrees plus the mass of the balloon over the volume of the system. And the idea is that this is row of 50 degrees so a lot of times people just will write this like this, rho of 50 degrees plus the mass of the balloon over the volume. So they're separating these into two terms, but you have to divide by the volume of the system is the point here. So how much is this? It is PM over R times, and in order to save space, we'll just write one over 50 plus 273, which is 323, plus 350 over V, and that works out to 1.19. So the key here is to remember that you have to add the masses before dividing by the volume. So if you decide to do them separately, remember this has to be the volume of the system. 
Now we're ready to actually solve our equation. Z1 is down here on the bottom, so Z1 is a 0. So Z2 is what we're looking for. What do we have? Z2 equals minus R times T. T has to be the one that doesn't depend on Z, doesn't depend on the balloon. So it's this one here. So it has to be in Kelvin. So it's 12 plus 273 is 285 divided by M and G. And then we have LN of our two values. So 1.19 divided by 1.2. Two. Now we expect this to be negative because it's less than 1 anyway. And so it will multiply with that negative to give us a positive. So when we calculate all of that out, we get 214 meters. And that is the answer to part 2. Now the last thing we want to do is a little bit of thinking and also see an animation. The idea is that at liftoff, what do we have? We have Z1 equals Z2 equals 0. They're both sitting on the ground. So how could we make this 0? Only if this is 1. Let's call this 2A. That would mean that row 1 equals row of 2A. How can row 1 be row of 2A? We can see how we calculated row 1. Row 1 was equal to PM over R times 1 over 285. And row 2A, we now have to use the fact that we're figuring in the weight of the balloon, was PM over R. And here we need to put in our variable TL in the place of 50 plus 273 and then plus 350 over V. So now if you set row 1 equal to row 2A and multiply through by V, you will see that that is exactly the equation that we solved previously for buoyancy where we got TL equal to 41 degrees Celsius. So these are the same equations. So we can use this and the fact that at liftoff Z1 equals Z2 equals 0 to solve for 41 degrees Celsius. The other thing is that since row 1 equals row of 2A, of course, we would still get the same answer if we had used 2A and 2 to find Z. So this is the key fact at liftoff. The cold system 1 and the liftoff system 2A have equal densities. That is how this equation works. Here we are with a tiny animation of our balloon. We're at the starting point where the temperature in the balloon and the temperature in the air is 12 degrees Celsius. The mass of the displaced air is 3,792 kilograms. And the mass of the air in the balloon is also 3,792 kilograms because we haven't started heating. So now let's start heating our balloon. The temperature goes up. We can see that we still have not made it to the 350 difference that we need to take off. So let's keep going. We get to 41. We now have a difference of 350 kilograms. Our height is still 0 meters. And notice our ratio of the rows is 1 exactly. So that's the ratio of row of the heated system 2A at 41 and row of the cold system 1 at 12 degrees. And so now we're ready to take off and we go up, 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 up to 50. And at 50 we get 213 meters height. Notice that the ratio of the rows is not really big. It was 0.9 at the beginning, it's now 1.03. And if we go along here, let's move this back and forth, notice that the slope doesn't really change. So it almost looks like this is linear. It's not. But remember in the previous problem, 
the density didn't change very much. It barely changed 15%, I think, in 1,500 meters. So the change in the density of the air with height is not a lot. So that makes it almost linear at low altitudes. So anyway, that's how our balloon moves as the air inside is heated up.